him, y'all. I, oh my goodness. Mm, mm, mm. You will know troubled heart, you'll know every life has reason for I made it so You know, trouble heart, you know, problems have solutions, trust and I will show, oh, oh you will no, mm. lonely heart, you know, every life has reason, and for I made it so. Okay, I'm going to stop because I forgot. Oh, Lord have mercy. Oh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, family. Welcome to the Mental House with me, your host. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Listen, you guys, I'm trying to wait for a few more seconds to pass because I don't know how many of y'all have been keeping up with all the stuff that's going on in the world. I want to say, <sighs> all I can do is just pray for peace, okay? Because 2020, what Prince was talking about, he said 1999. <sighs> but I'm going to tell you what ushered in. You know, this is the, the age of a Aquarius, right? And it is so much truth. That is hitting the planet and so many demons and lies and demonic energy being exposed right now. <laughs> this is that all over the world. All over the world. When you look at what's happening uh, with Vladimir Putin and then over. It, here's I will say one thing about that. If anybody in America that will have a problem with that. Or what's going on? Or what Vladimir Putin is doing? And the fact that he got Donald Trump in his back pocket, then they should also um, be under suspicious instead of watching other people and investigating our phones and stuff. You need to uh, get all those people for, uh, what you call it, treason. Okay? And then just total ill will against your own country. Because it is madness. It's madness. And when you start talking about nuclear, with crazy white men, anything can happen. See, black indigenous people don't want to kill the environment. That's what people always say. We're different or we're all the same. But we are. But we're different, though. So we're different. The indigenous people are one with the earth. The white man and the European, something about your spirit is totally contrary. You don't get no damn. You the, you call the great blood shedder in the scriptures. So who am I to argue with scripture? So all I'm saying is there is something real diabolical about um, what's going on right now. And it is so close to World War Three. Right now, you know, that we need to stay uh, prayed up. And some of us are prepared for this day, and some of us are not. Fact of the matter is, it, it, you know, it, it might be get worse before it gets better. We don't know how this trickle down effect is going to really happen. I mean, what's going to take place. Um, so, 
I'm praying for everybody, and we got to all, you know, buckle down and try to keep information as accurate as possible. So let's bear down and see what's going to happen. Now, another thing I want to know if y'all been keeping up with or if you've heard about is this damn Brookside Police Department right outside of Birmingham, Alabama, y'all. Uh-uh. Have, have you heard about it? Have you even heard about what has been going on in this small police department that they have been... The stories are just unbelievable. The stories are so unbelievable, you, you wouldn't want to... You couldn't even believe it. Um, and it's not just happening to black people. It's happening to white people. So what has happened is they have... I bet it was good while it lasted. They've been writing tickets in other counties, um, doing all kinds of corrupt stuff. And so the town hall meetings have brought out a lot of accusations that these police officers um, have been doing to the citizens, okay? And some of the stuff is so egregious that it's even hard to fathom. Y'all think, whatever, wherever you live, you think the police department is bad. We haven't had, I know we haven't here yet, had to experience nothing like this. It's been going on, it's in Jefferson County, Brookside, Jefferson County. Of course, it's in Alabama. So it's just like finding out right now that you have a slave that the, and, and some people are running slave quarters. It's, it's equivalent to that, how they've been running this town. So what I'm going to do right now, I'm going to play a few excerpts from people who were actually... Uh, these are all the allegations brought by citizens of Brookside. Okay, against this damn police department and what has been happening. It is brace yourself, y'all, because some of the shit is just off the chain. I'm up to you. I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm just head. like. That's right. We do want to stress that these are just allegations. But dozens of people came here with the same basic story, horror stories about what happened to them after they were pulled over by members of the Brookside Police Department. With Representative Wandelin Gavan joined by Sheriff Mark Petway and an investigator appointed by the city of Brookside listening in, the accusations of mistreatment came from the mouths of citizens who felt violated. Here's a listen to some of them. This officer had rings in his eyes. He looked like he was about to shoot me. He had his hand on the holster the whole time. I was fearful for my life. They asked me to strip. But nigga, I had to do it. He said, if you don't do it, we're going to dock you with um, fleeing, fleeing the police. That's what he said. With their guns drawn. I cannot tell you what trauma that lit up in me. I felt like I was either going to be raped or murdered in my own car. He was so mad. He was ready to snatch me out of there. He took my car, he took my gun, and he left me on the side of the road. I had to walk for like almost three hours before my friend found me. Um, I have a payment plan, $850 a month. Oh, I got I got a payment thing here, say $5,000 for, for improper light. <laughs> I mean, it's here in the print. Well, the investigator gathered all of those stories, those horror stories, and Representative Gavan said that she had a very productive meeting today with the Attorney General of the state of Alabama, Steve Marshall, and he says uh, that he is taking these matters quite seriously. Of course, we'll be watching all of these allegations. In fact, many lawsuits unfold in the days and weeks ahead. We'll be watching this very closely. We are live tonight. Let me tell you something. This 
it is it gets worse. It is so egregious, you know, because a lot of times you have these little towns and all they doing that's what was up at Ferguson. And y'all don't we gotta stop stop allowing this to happen. It's we the people. The people gotta understand that they actually have more power than they really actually think of. They have. We're not powerless. United we stand and divided we fall. So if your and it's like if your hands are not in a fist, you cannot work together to strike that mighty blow. If you got a hand out, it's just in a flat hand, everything is separate. These this stuff is happening in a, all kinds of little townships outside of the main cities. Okay. We got one here, like Whitefish Bay or um, you know, Fox Point. Where all of um some of some of them where rich people live, but if a black person is coming through the town, they gonna stop them. Of course, they still got their sundown town. That's Appleton, Wisconsin, right? But what is happening here in Brookside is so damn crazy. How are you gonna give somebody a ticket, um, and then say they have to pay a payment plan eight? Hundred and fifty dollars a month. Okay, corruption is abound, and we have, like I said, in most small cities, a little townships, USA, all of them need to be turned inside out and audited because this is what they do. They do this to keep because they don't even have enough funds to have a police department, or they'll get open up a prison. And then put up and put black folks in it, brown folks in it, and then make us supply jobs for the whole damn city. Stanley, Wisconsin, places like that. You got people in these prisons, and they ain't. It, listen, all of them are not hardened criminals. Some of them went in for nonviolent drug offenses. But what they do is they supplying jobs to all these poor white folk out in these rural areas and they build a prison. It's the same shit, except from Brookside in Alabama, you already know the history. They just doing it to anybody that they feel like doing it to. So this is something that's really insane. It's really insane that they were allowed um to even get away with something so damn crazy. So I'm going to share with y'all what um I, because I'm looking for an update. I know the the police chief resigned right away. Um he he resigned because they busted. They are busted for their corruption. It is. I I want. It's so damn crazy. Uh, and out of second in command, quit. Okay, yeah. You can't. If you get on Facebook and they see you on, they got somebody manning the Facebook. So if they see you making a comment about what happened to you on Facebook, guess what? They gonna come to your house, or do things um, to you in retaliation. So it's like uh, um, this. This right here. Welcome to Brookside, Alabama, home of the surprisingly expensive traffic ticket. Home to one general dollar, Dollar General. Nine police officers, two drug dogs, one named K9 Cash, just in case you had any doubts about the PD's intentions. Okay? And one lieutenant governor orders a state audit. Brookside made national headlines for soaking every passenger passing driver officers could fine with excessive fines, fees, and vehicle seizures and inconvenient court dates. They just take your car, throw it away, whatever. Um, 
the investigation showed that under a police chief, Mike Jones, who was t hired in 2018, the small town has seen an increase in traffic fines topping 600,000 in 2020. The Department Overachievers patrolled over 114,000 miles in a single year, issued more than 3,000 citations to passing drivers. Chief Mike Jones still had room to complain, despite his department's funding escalating from 79000 to 524000 since he took office. The $600,000 fine figure uh, may have seemed abhorrent to anyone outside the suddenly flush Brookside, but Chief Jones said there was room to improve. The new chief's directors had an immediate effect on officers who took the very few streets in unmarked cars while wearing unmarked uniforms. The result influx on traffic citations defendants pulled officers from the remarkably undangerous streets of rural Brookside to perform traffic control for the dozens of out-of-towners driving into Brookside to attend once-a-month court sessions. The officers also decided the gloves were off and treated alleged alleged moving violators accordingly. According to multiple accounts from the Brookside victims, the cops made up laws, fabricated charges, used racist language and slurs to address the drivers. As a result of this unexpected national coverage, Chief Mike Jones' boss, hoggish practices and policies, Chief Jones resigned his position. Boss hoggish. As a result, I'm sorry, of this unexpected national coverage of Chief Mike Jones's boss hoggish practices and policies, Chief Jones resigned, resigned his position, leaving it to the Brookside Metroplex to decide what to do with all the extra cops it had decided to employ while Chief Jones was making it profitable to be a government employee. Mm -hmm. Former Chief Jones may be able to duck under the national press radar, but local scrutiny continues thanks to Alabama.com. The testimonials continue to pour in and showing Jones and his employees did pretty much everything but shoot someone on Fifth Avenue before being forced to act like real police officers in the face of the criticism and millions of dollars. Drivers who have had the displeasure of interacting with the Brookside PD aren't very happy, and their complaints have made their way to social media services. Apparently, a couple hundred feet of the interstate traffic isn't the only thing that the Brookside PD has been policing. Officers have been monitoring the Internet to silence complaints and ensure that the continued flow of excessive fines and fees continues. My God, it's, it's insane, y'all. It's it's okay. So let me let me. This is it's just makes I'm seething. Michelle Jones made an official complaint to the Alabama Attorney General office three years ago, arguing that Brookside police stopped her out of their own jurisdiction, issued a bogus citation, and threatened her with more charges after she criticized them on Facebook. In 2020, she had complained her case this way to the attorney general's office. The person threatened me with an arrest if I didn't take down my Facebook pictures and posts of their police officers. Stop sending emails to local politicians as well as others and show them, Brookside Police, that I understand law enforcement practices. Jones is not alone.
as Alabama.com inadvertently rhymes, others have come forward to complain about Brookside's cops issuing less than implicit threats about one online criticism. Another driver pulled over by Brookside officers complained, I mean, claimed that the cop confiscated her phone, explaining uh, that the P- police department often, ha- often had drivers try to stop and record us. Jones's case, however, is one of the most alarming. After posting to Facebook, she was called by someone who only identified himself as Detective Johnson of the Brookside Police Department. He demanded that she come in and talk to the officers at the police department. When she refused, things escalated. Detective Johnson had called and asked that I come to the Brookfield Brookside, I'm sorry, police department, and talk to them. After I told him that I would not, he reported that they have two warrants for my arrest. Oh, my God. He stated that I issued threats, incited a riot, and slandered the Brookside Police Department in my Facebook post. He reported that his police chief was mad. This is insane, y'all. This is insane. Brookside ain't the only one operating like this. Others who have been pulled over by Brookside officers claim they've been pulled over again and again, not for allegedly moving violations, but to be told there will be consequences if more negative content was posted to social media. It's not surprising that a law enforcement agency that has largely blown off the Fourth and Fifth Amendments would treat the First Amendment so cavalierly. About the only thing the Brookside Police Department hasn't done is demand U.S. military members to be quartered by driver cited for possibly imaginary traffic violations. This is insane. Let me. <clears throat> While it is somewhat satisfying to see Chief Jones flee his position of power after being pinpointed as the person responsible for the flagrant abuses of power, it would be far more satisfying to see him run out of town um, by aggrieved Brookside residents. But for whatever reason, locals and local officials have nearly nothing to say about the three years of exponentially escalating roadside extortion that took place under their roses, their noses for three whole years. And it was under their noses that the town is incredibly small and the residents had to know the budget situation had changed drastically once Chief Jones was hired. Everyone here is culpable. But the town officials are the most culpable. They had the power to stop this, but they chose to profit from it instead. And for that, they should all be set out of a job as Chief Jones is. The real shame is Mike Jones will probably be able to leverage this bullshit success into a better paying job somewhere else in the nation since nothing he has did uh was found to be illegal. But that may change in the future as lawsuits against him and his department move forward. But far too many cash strapped communities uh, for, you know, for for them, uh, a roadside bandit like Chief Jones might just be the hero they need (laughs) or at least endorse until it becomes politically inconvenient. That's that's a shame. This happened to be it has to be one of the most corrupt departments. Alabama. Keep your eye on this story. I want to know what y'all think. What if you heard about it? If you've been following it, because it's it's too crazy. The population is only twelve hundred. 
How could they have so much money? Topping fines at six hundred thousand from seventy nine thousand when this man took office. The whole town is culpable in this instance. Uh uh. Uh uh. And you got we got to pay money for this corruption. If your town can't sustain itself without tickets, then you don't have no town. You got to merge with somebody else. It's just that simple. You don't get your own to do this shit to people. We got a lot of lot of lot of them in, in uh, Wisconsin that operate like this. This is insane. I remember my friend and I um, uh, went to go. So we went to the store. We'd already we bought fishing license right at another store, and they didn't know. We got our bait from them because they had a certain bait that we wanted, and um, so we went there with them. And guess what? As soon as we got in our car and drove away, the uh, police or the D uh, in our man came and said, "Where's your, you know? Can I see your license?" <laughs> we hadn't even pulled off five seconds. Okay, so that's how they operate. But this shit here, I want to know what y'all think about it. Please tell me. If you like what you hear, please like, subscribe, share your, this video, um, and I'll see you in the next video. Stay safe and be blessed.